All right. So again, my name is Kevin Bailey. We're going to work off of edmaps.org because a lot of this that you're going to use on edmaps pro starts with the very beginning of using it on edmaps.org. And so as we go through this, we're going to run through some of those same pages that Rebecca just showed us so that you guys will be able to see exactly what you've got to set up on edmaps.org so that it transfers over to edmaps pro. And so we're going to start right there at that beginning stage. Make sure you sign in. We're going to work off of the My Edmaps. So if we click on My Edmaps, it pulls up that same page right here. And we're going to work kind of down this we just kind of went over the dashboards. Rebecca did an outstanding job on explaining what that is and why we have it. And really, you know, I want to talk about just a little bit about my dashboard is, is that a lot of the data that I put in, I can pull that information myself. You know, I'm out there and I'm taking that data with Edmaps Pro and it auto generates my dashboard right here. And I can quickly pull that information if I need. So the next thing that I want to talk about is when you're out there using, whether it's the EdMaps app or the EdMaps Pro app, your reports go here as well as your revisit. So you can go ahead, you can view them, you can edit them, uh, do whatever you need to do right here. And this is where it all goes. As soon as it gets verified, if it's a new point, it's got to be verified. If it's a my revisit, it doesn't have to be verified because somebody's already previously done that. Uh, again, Rebecca touched on the bulk uploads and went through that. And you can also, you know, if you've done a download before, you can look, hey, I've done that before. Maybe I already have that information. So the first thing that we've got to set up on this is my species list. Uh, and again, this here starts the process for the EdMaps Pro app. And so as you can see here, I can add an individual species with this list. And I can go through and add each individual and then it, and then it starts to auto populate here down below, or I can specifically have a, a species list that's already added here in edmaps.org. I can go ahead and click that and then it adds that list down here into this bottom query here. Again, one thing that I really like is if I'm out in the field with my edmaps pro app and say I'm going to be mapping hoary crest. I can hold down on hoary crest and I can move that species to the top. So if I'm out there and I know that I want that to come right up to the top of my list, I can do that. Now, one way that I use it is that I have my kind of those five top lists, those species that I have that I map, it seems like constantly. I try to keep them in that top five so that I can easily, it's just easily when I go to press that and you'll see that in with Jerry is I can press that and it automatically, it's just right there, easy for me and easier for the user. The next thing that will auto-populate onto EdMaps Pro is, is my saved queries. Rebecca touched on this a little bit, and, and it really helps with the new advanced query tool page. Uh, so what we want to do here is, is we want to create a new data set. So this is specifically, if I've got a project going on or a specific weed, I'm going to go and I'm going to create this because when I create it here on edmaps.org, it's going to transfer over to, and I can be able to toggle that on and off on the edmaps pro app. So if I click the create new data set, it's going to pull up that advanced query page and I'm not going to go through everything because uh, Becca did an outstanding job uh, on that. You, you put in your dates, you can put in your species. And then when you press the save query, it shoots you back to this page and it automatic it saves it right in there. Now you're going to see something similar on your EdMaps Pro app. Uh, now again, you can't delete it from your EdMaps Pro app. This is where you delete those is, is in the edmaps.org portion of this. Uh, the other two things over here on the left, uh, projects I'm not going to hit on, but I, I really wanted to hit on uh, the alerts and Chuck kind of alluded to a little bit on the alerts. And this is one of the things that as the state of Utah, it, it kind of drew us to this because we wanted to know what was going on and around our borders. We had the data and, and a lot of the people around our borders have data. And if there's something that comes in that, that I don't have or either our state doesn't have and it comes into our state, you can create an alert here for yourself. And it comes in an email form and it makes it simply easy for you to be able to say, hey, he's up. maybe I better go and check this out. This is kind of close to my border. 
So what I have is I have it set up for the state of Utah, and then I also have it set up for specific counties that are adjacent or surrounded my counties. And then I get an alert. If there's something on my border that I don't have in my county and it's getting close, maybe I better get out there and look. And so this is really a really good thing. It doesn't really have anything to do with EdMaps Pro unless somebody's out there taking that data and it ends up getting in your borders or, or close to your borders. But I just wanted to, to touch on that. You can also request to be a verifier on this side, and, and I'm not going to go into the admin tools. So the next portion down here is the EdMaps Pro tools. This is where you, this first one is my county list. And what you're doing is this has to do with your data here that will be transferred over onto EdMaps Pro. Now, what I've went ahead and done is I've got the data from all of the counties that surround me uh, so that I have their data. So that if I'm working right there next to that border and I'm seeing something, you know, I can be able to say, hey, oh, it's already been mapped right here. I don't need to map it. And so I have all of those borders. Now, you don't have to have them all on, which Jerry is going to show you when he gets to that portion of EdMaps Pro. Uh, but again, this is where you create that. You add the county, uh, and then you, again, you can only delete it uh, right here on this app. And again, it shows up. You don't have to download it on your EdMaps Pro. It gives you the option of, of downloading it. But you do have the capability of, of having multiple data sets that are associated with you as the user and it pulls up on your map every time you pull up. The next thing is the photo projects. So photo projects is something that has to do with monitoring that we can use through EdMaps Pro. So you can create that here on uh, edmaps.org and you can also create one on EdMaps Pro and then everything is housed here on edmaps.org. And so I can go ahead, I can download these images here you know, if I need some of those pictures for a presentation or something like that, or if I need to hand in a report, I can pull all of those monitoring sites into this and I can download those. One nice feature about this is we have lots of users that go out that work in my county. I can have the ability to share these projects with other users. And then they can, if they're out there and they can see where we have those on the map and they can go ahead and take that after photo or, or they can start a new one either way, which makes it very, very user friendly and, and functionality is really good. Again, remember, you can only delete them here. You can't delete them on the app itself. So everything's kind of housed on edmaps.org, but it also crosses over to the edmaps pro app and, and you can see them in that list when, when Jerry pulls up that portion of the app. So project areas, this also has the ability to be able to be shared between users and strictly uh, the way that we've used this a little bit is if we have a project going on specifically between Jerry and myself, and we have our team out there working in an area, we can go and we can have a KML and have it started and we can upload that in here. We can choose a file, we can upload that KML, and then it comes back into this list down here. We also, Jerry, along with Chuck, we've been able to do some of our roads. So if we get out into, we have lots of area, Jerry and myself do, is, is that we don't have cell service. And so if you get out in some of the areas, you, you can't see the roads. All you can see is just your points. Uh, you can't pull up a topographical map, anything like that on EdMaps Pro. Uh, we have some things set up so that I, I have uh, a KML of the roads uh, that, that Jerry and Chuck helped get onto here. And so we can see those roads or those areas, and then we can kind of figure out where you're at uh, as you're out there mapping. We can also draw a KML. Specifically, if we have guys or a team working in this area, we can draw, and I'll show you this portion right here. So if I draw a KML, it's gonna pull up and I'm gonna name that layer. And then it's really, really user-friendly. And you can select the polygon tool, then you draw your polygon like you do on other interfaces. And then once you draw that, it's created. And then you just have to make sure that once you do that and you want to share that, you've got to be able to press that share. And then it's going to pull up so that you can add those other team members that are going to be out there mapping in this area. You just have to make sure that you add them so that, th that everybody has that polygon that you want them working in. And kind of the last thing that I wanted to touch on, and then we'll turn it over to Jerry here, is and Rebecca kind of 
alluded to this and, and went through this whole process. We use bulk revisits when we do aerial applications. And so you can see kind of, I've drawn this polygon here and I've gathered up this data here and you can see that they're red and they're positive points, which means we know that they're there, but we wanna be able to change all of these points to treated. Uh, and it's just one of those handy tools that we can. Now remember with this, and I don't think Rebecca touched on this, is that you can only change these points to either being positive, treated, eradicated. You, you cannot change the density or the acres that are associated when you do a bulk revisit. And I just wanted to just make that clear is that if you're going to have to change those other attributes that are associated with your point data or with your polygon data, you have to do that individually. You won't be able to do that as a bulk revisit. And so with that, I want to give Jerry plenty of time to be able to make sure that we we're able to go through and answer questions on Edmas Pro. I think out of those hours spent that Chuck showed everybody, I think Jerry and I and our teams put in a lot of those hours just trying to help generate and, and get the Edmas Pro going over the years and up and running so that, the, that it's user for everybody across all interfaces. Again, with that, I'll turn it over to Jerry. All right, okay. A little history. We've been working with Chuck for at least a dozen years now, I would guess. This didn't happen overnight. It's been a labor of love for all of us involved. Anyway, there's a lot to this. We're just probably going to scratch the surface. A lot of stuff is similar to this as the EdMaps app also. So I might gloss over some of this. But anyway, questions later if you want. So anyway, okay. Same thing. You're going to download this off of your app. They do look a little different between Android and Apple. So you can download it and open your app. And uh, <clears throat> now when you set this up and you log in or you make a new one and it asks you for the first time, allow to send and allow to use while you're using your app, allow it. It's not like you get a whole bunch of emails and a whole bunch of stuff. You get things that pertain to what you're doing and that only. So always allow it. It will save you a headache in the long run. So anyway, log into it. Your first startup screen is the one here on the left. You'll end up with whatever you ended up with last as far as, you know, where you're at. All of the screens have a little button up here, the little... Uh, uh, question mark and it'll tell you what the page has it'll answer questions like what all these what do all these colors of the points mean okay so anyway <clears throat> we'll start over here on the right you'll click on this little drawer the little hamburger icon this is your app settings on this side of it it's <clears throat> you, what you're looking at originally is the invasive map so we're going to go to the photo projects first. Okay, so on your photo projects, these are points that are all about the photo for documentation of what you're doing. We added this function a couple of years ago to it. So you're going to create a folder in the app, or you can create one on the website. But you're going to create the project, which is a folder that's going to house all of your points. So you're going to have a photo point multiple points, one point, multiple points in the folder. Then you can handle one photo or multiple photos in each point in that. Kind of a, a storage system similar to what you would find on a computer. So anyways, you'll put a picture in and your little plus sign, you can add more photos. And when you go back to add a photo to the same point, it's going to ask you which one you want to overlay. And I just got an example here, and it will ghost the photo behind you. So when you navigate yourself back to the point, you will actually ghost the photo behind it so you can recreate it. Now, the reason for the uh, portrait photo is so you can put them side by side. We had an option, one or the other, portrait or landscape, and it was better off to have them side by side. So it's a good tool to use. This is all about the photo and nothing to do with the weed, but it's embedded in this so you can actually document it. You can share these also, just like the projects. You can share these with other people. 
So you don't have to have multiple places where you go to find them. It's all there for you. So kind of a neat tool to have. Okay, here's your county data sets that Kevin showed you. When you set it up, this is mine. I have all my surrounding counties. I have a couple in Nevada and the rest are all in Utah because I do border two counties in Nevada. And there's the little box with the download arrow in it. That's what it'll start out like. When you click that, then you end up with the refresh button. You got to keep in mind when you download these, it's just a snapshot in time. So as soon as you do anything else in it, you have to upload and then refresh these screens. Then there's a trash if you don't want it on your device anymore. And then here's the off and on. Turn it off and on. It's not a good idea to have all these on because that would be a whole lot of data and it would really bog and slow down your machine. So the next one's your saved query they talked about. Same thing, your on and off button, trash it. If you don't want it, refresh it. When you refresh it, it goes back to the servers and downloads a fresh copy. It'll add new data that gets put in your specific query. Also, that's one thing to keep in mind. And all of these have a refresh button that will refresh these lists. If they didn't do it by themselves, it will force it to go back to it and find your query. Okay, <clears throat> next is the project areas Kevin talked about. Here's your same thing. You're, you, you've got a download button. You've got the trash button. You've got the turn it off and on button. But there's also this, uh, it's a zoom to centroid button. Now, when you do add one of these in there, it will ask you, where do you want your centroid? Do you want it in the center of your project? Do you want it at the end? You get to pick where the centroid of it is. So it's quite a handy thing to have when you're, you know, like Kevin said, we have a lot of stuff that sometimes it's not fun to have a white screen. You can still take points, do whatever you want to do, polygons, but you always have something, some way of figuring out where you're at sometimes. Okay, then you got the offline stuff, the aerial maps, and you have road maps, which is just a city street map. It's a little, it's a little more, uh, less size-wise. The aerial photography has some disadvantages. It has a zoom capability that's not quite so deep, so you're a little bit above the earth. It's hard to zoom in tight and look at it. But the other offline road maps will actually go a little bit better. Okay, so here's the queue. They talked about that. In this app, you have multiple things you're going to do. Everything has a place. You got observations, revisits, your images, and you can also do contest revisit or contest observations in here. And I'll talk about that in a few minutes. But anyway, so these are your options. They're the same as the other app. They look very similar. You just have different things you can in your upload queue. Okay. Now the last is the app settings. Just a word to the wise, click on this, save your photos. Cause if you ever lose points and something happens, you get a hiccup in a point that didn't work quite right. You have to delete it and start over. At least you will have the photo. You can add to the same photo to the point later. You know, you refresh your species here. You can send feedback here and send something that happened to you in. And it also tells you these points in the statistics are everything that you have capability of downloading is also there just as a number for you. Okay, all right, now going across the top of the screen, there's that F with a circle around it. These are your filters. So when you want to not see so many dots on the screen, you can filter them out. You can filter them by state list, specific species, observation, revisit dates, or report status, whether you want to see all, you just want to see all positive points, you can click on it and see that. This only new reports and revisits is something new. I haven't played with it for very much, so I'm not going to speak to it. Might be something Chuck can address later. Okay, so now on the other side, you have your app or map settings. The other side was app, this is map. So you can filter through or show state lists only your state if you have it set up into the system. You can click on Utah and just the Utah weeds, noxious weeds will come up. If not, you can take species, you could click one, you can click 10, whatever you want, you can add to this. And it also tells you how many of these points weeds 
whether they be noxious or not, how many points you have in your data set. So you'll see some of these weeds in here, you know, like cheatgrass or whatever, they aren't on our list, clasping pepperweed, but somebody has put one point in my county in this. You can also filter by observation date or last date visited, which is a revisit. You can hide or show in three month increments of what you did. If you don't want to see what you did yesterday, you're going to hide the last three months. So it's not showing up on the screen for the next day. Okay, and then you've also got the status, which I talked about was the positive treated. You're going to select which ones you want to show only on this one. Okay, <clears throat> now on the filtering, if you have something filtered and you look and you see on the screen and you see something you don't think you should be seeing or you don't see something you need to see, chances are you've got filters on and you didn't know it. So you click the clear all filters and it will take them away. Now, the F, you'll notice the F right now is whited out behind. That means you have something filtered. So if you're in this mode right here and you see that white, you'll know something's filtered. Okay, now on the map settings over here, aerial photography, this is where you're clicking them off and on. If you do not need your offline maps, do not turn them on. Only use them if you're out of service. Okay, and the old same way, click them off and on here. You'll have to download them. It does take time to download because they are really there. There, some of them can be, you know, a gig or more for an aerial. My county alone is split into four aerial size or aerial files. So, okay, auto follow. This is a function we added a couple of years ago, so you could keep going with yourself. You have two options on it. You can either keep your direction, which means you're always going up on the screen, or you can have north always up on the screen. Either way you like it, you have the option to do it. If you ever move yourself around on the screen, it quits auto following until you click on the auto locate button, the bullseye on the bottom. Okay. Now under that, you have, what do you want to see? You know, satellite normal, which is a street map, or terrain, which is more of a topo map. That's your three options for when you're in service. Okay, <clears throat> now you have what you're gonna display. Now this is where they, the both apps, Android and the iOS do differ a little bit here. On an iOS, you have to have one, only one on at a time. So you can see your county records, and it will show multiple counties if you want, but that's all it shows. If you select the saved records, which is a, from a query, it will only show those, but it filters it out to what you don't see. These two are the same things, same picture with different things filtered. Okay, photo projects will only show your photo. It'll have the little camera in the icon photo on it. You can click on these, you can navigate to them once you're here. And that's all, but that's all you'll see. And then for a verifier, whoever happens to verify in your state, your county, they have an option to show unverified. If you click this, you'll show your own, you'll only see your unverified till it's verified. And it'll show just those only, but that's more of a verifier thing. Okay. I got five minutes left to go through this. Maybe, oh, 10. Okay, so now putting new points in EdMaps Pro is similar, but a little different than the other app. So you're going to select the plus button. You can select the bullseye to put yourself in the middle of the screen. It comes up with five different options. You can actually walk a polygon now. This is something new that just got added in the last year where you can actually walk a polygon. You can use your location, which you'll put it wherever you happen to be at. Whether you're there on the screen or not, it'll put you there. You can draw a polygon if you want, or you drop a marker. Now, if you can put points where you're not at, if you would like, it puts it in the middle of the screen, okay? So if you get it in the middle of the screen, like this third picture over, the white is you'll hold on that for a second and you can move the picture, okay? So that's the five choices. Then you'll click done or next and then done. 
then you'll come up with a similar screen as before. You'll hit click on the pencil. You'll add your species. Your list comes up. This is where Kevin talked about the order of your species here. Now you don't. You can take these off, move them all the way bottom if you don't want to use them. You can leave them alphabetized. You know that's the idea. Any device you log into, this all this stuff follows you with it. Okay. Then you're going to add a photo. If you're not the verifier, add photos. People that want to verify and want to see pictures, you know, it's always a good idea to do it. Um, so you'll do that. Then you'll scroll down. If you need to have to move the point, if you're on the wrong side of the road or you're in the field next door and you don't want to jump a fence or whatever, you can click on the little map icon here. And when you click up that map, all you have to do is touch the screen and you can put a point in to move it wherever you want to. Just touch it. It'll have a little blue dot. You click OK and it'll leave the dot there. Same thing down here, your density, your acres, positive treated negative for new points. And down here, you've got a note, place for the notes if you need to put what you did, what you treated, what you did, whatever you want to remember there. Click save and done, and there's your point. Now, polygons are a little bit different if you're doing them, especially if you want to go back and move the polygon. It's something you have to play with, but it's possible. Okay. Now on the screen, when you touch a point, you'll come up with a little dialog box here that says what the species is, the last date, the observation date, last date, who did it? And it'll have two options, view details and report a visit, revisit. So you hit report or revisit, the same similar looking dialog box comes up. You can add a new picture. You can add multiple pictures. You can add a note, click save or scroll down, same thing, add the data. You want to change the attributes, how many acres. It should come up with the acres from the previous or square feet from the previous thing that revisit on it. Then you're going to click save. You're done with the revisit. Now, if you hit the view details, this actually brings this box up that shows you what it is. You can view the revisits from the app just a list of them, who in what order have done them. On the bottom, you have view records on Edmaps. will take you to the website and you can actually see all of the data on it, everything on it. You can actually have it guide you. It'll take you out of the app into Google or Apple Maps. And you've also got this contest record that we talked about. If you know there's something wrong with this, you go to that point and it's the wrong species, it's something else, you can hit contest. This screen on the right will come up and you will have, you have to put something in this to do it. And then you click save. And then it goes to your queue. Okay, I am a couple of minutes early if we had any questions. Thank you, Jerry, and thank you, Kevin. So yeah, any of our Attendees, if you do have specific questions about Edmaps Pro, please do put those in the Q&A. We do have one question regarding the amount of data I believe that you can upload for queries. So someone says whether you can talk about the 10,000 response limit for advanced query. They have some issues with, with large data sets. So I don't know if that's something that you'd be able to answer. The data sets get awful big over that, and they're hard to their crunch. What was the other question? I, that's a Chuck, probably Chuck. Yeah, I think they're just wondering if that limit is going to increase at all. Chuck, are you able to answer that? Yeah, I mean, it, it was as much, it's, it's primarily when it's going to the phone and just having too much data in a data set can, can cause problems. It's, it's a limit. When you do a saved query, I think the saved query cannot be over 10,000 records. But if, you know, if that needed to go up to 15,000 or something because of a specific need, that's something we could definitely uh, give a try. So there's got to be a limit or those files just get too big when you're trying to move them on to a device primarily. A question about whether it can be downloaded as a geo JSON file. Maybe we can answer that too. 
Yeah, I, I saw that and I was going to um, just follow back up with them. Uh, you, there's not a direct way to do that on the website, but I think we're using a form of GeoJSON to actually do the points on the map. And so with a little bit of looking at the code, you could probably pull it by species. Um, and if there's a specific need for that format to be available to integrate into some other application, then it's always something we can look into. And the, the another question that's in there is about workflow for setting up citizen science training project. And, you know, the honest truth is the tools are all here. You, you can go through and set up a project and handle it that way, or you can just go out and train um, the group that you're working with on using the Edmaps app and they can get started and start collecting data and go forward. And that's probably the easiest and best way to do that for now. And yeah. I'll answer that last question, then we can take a break about the proximity alarm feature. No, we have not gotten that in integrated yet. Um, the concept there is that in Edmaps Pro, you're downloading the data normally for an area and you can see it on the map. But in the Edmaps app, if you're out in the field and you had cell phone coverage, being able to hit the server and go, okay, is there a species, is this species already been reported, you know, near where you are? And if so, make that a revisit versus making it a new record. And that's something that we've talked about. It, we just haven't been able to implement yet. And, and, and that is sort of like pulling the lat long from the picture that you take on your phone versus where you are at the time. That question came up earlier. And just so everybody gets the answer to that, that's something we're looking into. Our concern is that, you know, making it clear which one you use if they're different in terms of where you currently are and the lat long with this embedded into the photo. And just, we don't want to introduce more problems by incorporating that feature and then people report something where it's not actually at. I'd like to welcome Melissa Wilt and Debbie Monfor from the UGA Center for Invasive Species and Ecosystem Health and they will be sharing with us um, a presentation on introducing the EdMaps brand.